Hey guys, I'm not going to be talking too much here right away because uh, give uh, time for the word to spread that we actually have a room open for the close today. It's a crazy day, so I figured why not? <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, I won't be talking too much, so at least not right now, but um, we will as we get a little closer. So meanwhile, you can just watch the context here. Uh, this is the session at the top of the screen. Uh, that's 30 minutes in the middle, and then 15 seconds running for the four indexes on the bottom. The 30 minutes is just ES. Uh, NQ and ES at the top. That's what we're looking at right now, and we will continue to look at it. You know what? For the purposes of this session, let's just do this. That'll be a whole lot easier to see, won't it? Okay, so there's basically the entire session on a 30 minute, so we can really see what's going on. Nice little bounce off the bottom once it finally happened. It only took one, two, three, four, five periods to get going, but it held the low. That was a really good um, trade to use a bunch of micros and just treat it like a swing trade, which I did do. But um, now who knows up here, we're kind of, you know, where it dropped pretty hard from and so anything could happen. And we can kind of watch the momentum down here on the bottom. Blue is going up momentum. And um, yeah, because those are, those are trades going by on the buy side, obviously. But, you know, it's, it's not crazy strong. It's still going up. It's at 17.50. So we can kind of see what it's doing right there. Price rejector on the pullback. I'm not long anymore. I was a little while ago off of that low that I was just showing. Um, it's a pretty nice little bottom down there. But since then, I'll make these a little easier to read. Uh, since then, I'm not really interested. It's moving around a lot here in both directions. This should be a really, really interesting close though. So um, I think what we'll do is just, I mean, this is probably the simplest way to watch everything because if it gets really busy, I'll, I'll put the, um, the faster ones back up and we can watch them. Oh, you know what we could do? Hold on a second. I could superimpose one of them on the bottom. Let's try that. Yes, 15 seconds, uh, except it's in the wrong place. Yeah, that doesn't really work. All right. So anyway, here we are. The close is a ways off, about, what, 40 minutes? Let me clean that up so we can see the pullback. So basically, this is 30 minutes of the whole session here. And um, very interesting spot. This is the first hour low down here. It's still a ways above us, which also remains interesting. Let's scoot that down. Where the first hour high is all the way up there. So this is going to continue to go up. The first place it's going to contend with is right there. And that's a ways up there. What, 23? Yeah. So. Anyway, that's worth watching. But the long at the lows was pretty easy to play simply because it, you know, it was asymmetric. If you were wrong, it was obvious and, you know, it ultimately played out, but you sure had to be patient down there. On the other hand, um, going this way, oh, I don't know. It may even be done right now going up. Who knows? So, let's see. What's going on over there? Nothing. Yeah, we're still kind of hanging on by a thread here in TPO land. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, it. this is that two-day 
sprint we had back up that we consolidated at, and we're right in the middle of it. So you could argue this, it's an ambush zone. You could argue it conclusively either way. So it's kind of a waste to talk about it. Low volume in the middle on the profile. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's that. No question about that. Good point. Yeah, here's uh, here's the my... Uh, 30, my 15 minute profiles. And yeah, we're smack dab in the middle of this low volume node right here. There's a ton of it right above us, which is also the overnight low right about the same spot, which is also the first hour low. So yeah, that's really a significant spot there right at 20. You know, that that's the first spot it's going to have to prove itself to get through. So yeah, David, that's, that's definitely correct. Um, or Dave, I'm sorry, not David. I have Dave and David here. So that was Dave that said that. So anyway, um, you know, I'm not going to force myself to talk for an hour and a half. I already did that this morning. Um, but I think this could be fun. So I figure we'll open a room and, um, and we'll watch it. And if I have something to say, I will. You know me. I'm not bashful, but in the meantime, I'm not just going to babble. This is a really clear situation. It could get interesting up here. It could get interesting, certainly back down here or even here, you know, so 07 and a half, certainly the low 07 and a half. And right now it's, it's working this 15 area and there's a price rejector on the pullback with a fairly clean top and the initial balance low all the way up at 20, which is, you know, five and a quarter points away. So you could argue this all kinds of ways. So we'll just say we agree that's what it, it's doing and I'm not gonna take a position, but the low volume node in here is very interesting. If it gets up in there, it could fly through, but we dropped through it really hard. You could see there was a battle right there and then boom, we just dumped down below it. I mean, on really heavy selling um, here, right over here on the far left. So. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just watch it. It's, uh, you know, if there's going to be a closing event, um, it happens a couple of different times, usually starts. Yeah, on a big down day like this, people might start covering shorts, and that could be what we're seeing now. Um, but usually you don't see that till right at the end of the session. So could this be, you know, just a little bounce? Uh, you know, you could argue it. So and in the meantime, I'm kind of sitting on my hands. I was long. Like I said, I liked the long. It worked really good. Now, I, you know, the low volume node, it makes this interesting as a long, but the fact that it already came so far, I don't know. I'm not crazy about buying it. I might do it with a micro or something here. All right. Now it looks like it might have. All right. That's it. Now it's going back and forth with high isn't high enough. Now might be a good spot to nibble on a long here. and uh, see if it can continue. It took out the, the high of that. Um, we got a little time before the top of the hour. Yeah, this could get really interesting. Um, you know, God, certainly uh, the holiday rally could start going into the close, you know? So let's, oh, you know what? Let's look at the internals real quickly, just so you guys, I've been watching this. The down volume picked up quite a bit. And um, we're at the low end of the advanced decline, and it, it had bounced pretty nicely, but we're still toward the bottom of it, you know, so there is a bounce going on there. The cumulative tech is just getting crushed. So the, the selling is certainly what's driving this. So, um, yeah, now that top's real clean, zero, zero and five now. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't hold like 15 here, it's going to have a lot of trouble being along. It's going to be a really bad, it's going to be a really quick short here if it doesn't hold this 15 area. I'm nibbling here at 15 just for fun. But it's I'm doing it in micros, by the way. So, you know, let's see. Yeah, the selling's pretty heavy. Watch on the pullback there. We had our price rejector on the pullback. We don't anymore. And there's a lot of selling in there. So that could be the end of it. And we could go back to the lows. That's uh, certainly possible. But there's just a lot of volume it's got to get through first. So let's see how it holds 15. And if it doesn't, um, I mean, like I said, I'm going to nibble here, but if it doesn't hold it, I'm going to get out of the way. It's, it's not a great spot. It's not as good as zero, zero was, but it does, but it does have some, there, there is some buyers here. So, all right, there, it just tested it again. It held it again. I'm talking about 15, but it really has to hold on here. It looks like it's getting sold. I can't really tell yet. Well, now we've got a clean bottom at 15. So let's watch it. 
Okay, I'm going to put this guy back down to this size. So you guys can watch my 15 second view here because I'm actually long off 15 now. There was a little bit of momentum there. And so you guys can watch the short term momentum there on the 15 second footprints. And that those are deltas, those bar by bar deltas on these 15 second. So these are basically just really fast footprints. And I'm just using them so I can kind of see the momentum of everything all at once. Um, yeah, so 15 is definitely the spot that's in play. You can see it. You now, if it's going to go up and fill in this low volume node above us, this would be a great spot to hold. But, you know, the POC is all the way down at 10. And I have no idea where the view app is right now. It's so uh, guess, look, it's above us. Is it 24 and three quarters? This is a very interesting potential long setup here, guys. Um, again, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't even invest a mini in it. I've got a couple of micros in it, but I think it could play out. So, so anyway, you know what that looks like down there. I'm going to zoom this in just a bit so it's clear. Now, there's the price rejector on the pullback formed again. We're right on min delta. So if it can hold right here and then get above that max delta there at, what, 417, this is a really interesting spot. And in the meantime, I've got two points of profit, so I'm happy. I'm long from 15 if you're just joining us on that another bounce I, I was long from zero zero i took profits and then i just got long again at 15. so uh, let's see if we can get get up into this low volume node up here things could get really interesting but i'm not i'm not saying it's gonna do that i'm just saying that will make a very interesting trade okay this could be it right here fasten your seat belts the long off 15 is now three points green i'll take that any day but i'm not gonna marry it so it's got a it's got a hold right in here. Uh, I just took some of that off at 18, a little bit of my micro long, just because again, it, it we're in this low volume note that it, it's got to really pick up the momentum to get through it, or people are just going to lose interest. So, and we'll go back down to 15. So anyway, I took profits. I got three points. I'll take it. Yeah, and there we go back down. So you can see it playing out a little bit. If we could blow 18 or 19 on really good volume and momentum, then then we could have a really nice burst up to maybe 24. But right here, you know, th there's good scalps. You just really got to get good entries. 15 was a perfect entry. We got a nice little pop there, but now I'm not convinced. Well, now it's starting to move again. Let's watch the top here. Yeah, it's going to go. All right, there it goes. There's 19 and a half. Okay, so that's the... Uh, Initial bounce low right above us at 23. Very interesting stuff for scalping. And oh, there's 20. Okay. So that's definitely the most significant spot on the whole chart right now is 20 and for a lot of reasons. But but as I said earlier, from an order flow point of view, that's in play right now. The IB low and a long up pit still makes sense if you can manage risk. But I liked it better at 15 than I do here. So I'm still sitting on my hands till I get another good entry on the same idea. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get into that low volume node here. You know, the, the volume picks up again above 24, you know, like right above here, right above the IB low. So uh, this looks like it still wants to go up more. So we could have a wicked short squeeze going into the close. But again, before I get really aggressive joining that, I want it to have a lot more momentum than this. This is still susceptible. Like you could get swept down to 17 here real easily. And uh, you could also get swept up to 25. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those setups. So yeah, there it goes. Now it's, it's trying 20 again. There's quarter. See if it gets lifted. Now it's getting sold. Somebody's absorbing 20, which makes sense. That's the spot's been on there forever. And there we go, back down to 19, back to 18 and a half. Yeah, no, this is not, you don't, yeah, this is ex exactly. That's why you don't want to be long up there. 15 is the place to be long. It's just going to make you sweat it way too much up here. And of course, we're back to 19.5 again. Wow, it's, it really wants to battle 20. So let's see how the battle, let's see who wins. And then we'll, then we'll decide if we can play. Oh, anyway, if you're just joining us, just the closing session, I was long down at the double zeros, um, long again at 15. Now I'm not, but I'm kind of watching to see if this is going to get some momentum and fill in the low volume note as I just finished explaining. But um, at the moment, you know, it's, it's, got, it's two directional again here since we got to 20, which makes a lot of sense. 20 has been in play for a while. So anyway. 
Again, if I just crunch my 30 minute one down, you can see it took a long time to play out, but there was a really good place to get long with micros over time down here at the low, which is what I did. I took profits at 15. I just bought 15 again on the pullback and, and took profits on the push up. And now I don't really have an opinion. It looks like it still wants to go higher, but I'd much rather be long lower down. <laughs> Um, so if we drop down to 15, I'll, I'll nibble again, even 15 and even 16 right now I would buy. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple of orders down there just to get in line. I'm doing that over on my other screen. I've got my, I think I have my, I've got my, uh, vertical portrait one on for you guys. Don't I? Let me double check that. Uh, new share. Yeah. Okay. It's the correct one. All right, well, here we come down to 15. We might just get another shot at that long down here. I've got an order at 16, an order at 15 and a half. These are micros again. I'm scaling into micros, but I'm not going to marry that long down there. It's going to have to hold 15 aggressively, or I'm not going to be interested. So far, it's holding 16. So this looks like this could be a sweet spot. Take another one here. Here we go. Okay, so. So I've got two from six, uh, excuse me, 16, so that, 16.50. And I've got orders at 15 and a half and 15 and a quarter. And then one more at 14 and a quarter. So I'm going to see if I can end up with a half a position. In other words, five micros here, half a mini. I'm doing that on my other monitor, on my dome. And I've got this screen up for you guys so you can kind of get the lay of the land. We're sitting right on an attempt on the pullback to price reject. And you can see on my bottom four, those are the 15 second uh, footprints. You can see the momentum there is kind of going down, but but it has been two directional. So in, those are bar by bar deltas on a 15 second footprint. So that's basically duplicating what I see on my main screen. Anyway, uh, so that's what's going on. All right, well, I got another one here. So now I have three. Um, again, these are micros, so. And it's going to have to hold this, you know, this 14 and a quarter on up area, or I will not keep this trade. But the potential to get up to about 24 to retest the, uh, the eye below here, particularly since on this rotation, the top's not nearly as clean, neither is the bottom, but we price rejected once or twice off of the, the min delta right there. Max delta's up here. Even if it just gets back to max delta, this is another three-point trade. That's why I did it last time. Because, you know, even if it just works that range, now it's below min delta. Sellers, man, 15 still holding. Yeah, I like the spot right here. Let's see if it holds. You know, low risk, asymmetric spot to try and nibble long again. And, and 15 held beautifully there and filled out the bottom of the pullback. So let's see if it can continue. I am now long. Oh, what do I have here? I have four micros and the average is what? Let me see. Looks like 16 and a quarter. So I'm profitable right here, basically. And I'm trying to add a little bit. If it goes down a little bit more, we'll put another one on. <laughs> oh, a trade. I had one, an order right there where it just pulled down to 14.75, did not fill. And now we're back up at 16. Yeah, well, that happens. That's why I got in line, though. I'm in a good spot in line. I still didn't fill. Wow. So there's a larger limit order guy in front of me. All right, now here's another shot. Let's see if we fill this time. And there's the pretty much this is more aggressive on the sell side. It's it's gonna have to hold 15 for this idea to remain valid. And again, 15-ish, you know. The the bump in the high volume node is really down at like what 13. That's really where this okay, I got another one there on that. So this is the bump I'm talking about right here. So it's it's gotta hold this area. And, um, you know, if it gets anywhere into that high volume node and starts heading down, then things could get really ugly quick. But 15 is holding. So, again, I'm nibbling in. And now, let's see. Cool. All right. So, now I've got my five and the average is 15.5. So, I'm right on the, the current trade here. It's trading 14.75. And now it's trading 15. So, anyway, this is a good spot to nibble. Let's see if this works. If it doesn't, we'll get out of the way. It's asymmetric. That's all that we care about. Do, 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 do. And guess what? I think it's about to puke up, but let's see. I'm going to get out of the way really fast if it doesn't. All 
there's a big sign at the CME that says, Jeff is trading live. Do opposite of what he's saying is going to happen. It's like flashes on the floor. Okay, I am now profitable here. We're at 16 and a quarter. And again, I think a pop to 20 is, is uh, in the cards here. So that's our scalp at the moment. We're long from 15 quarter. 15, cool. I'm all right. Six, I might take one off at 17 and a half here just to be a good profit manager. Um, and that was filled. Okay, so I'm just, just kind of, I'm not really scaling out of it. I'm just... I always take profits. Okay, there and see 17.5 is in place. We'll take another one off there. So I've got three still here. Um, and now it's really good because now my average moved down because I bought lower there. So now the average is on right on 15 at 16 and a half. So I can let this rip if it does. You can see we had a couple of bursts on the 15 second here, the bar by bar, you know, some bursts of up momentum, but it, it's not overwhelming. So I don't want to get cocky here. But again, as long as 15 holds, I'm in the right spot. Okay, there's 16.5 again. I'd really like to see it get into this low volume node up here on the way to the IB low, but I'm not going to get married to that idea because it, it teases me and then it just doesn't seem to want to go. Okay, now we're back at 15 and a quarter. And now we're at 16. <laughs> this is like, you know, it's, it's like a race. Yeah, this is getting a little sweep here. I'm going to start taking profits. The sweeps are getting dangerous, even if they're going my way. And since I've got a point of profit here, I'm going to take off everything but one. We'll leave one on just in case it really rips. But I think I think this is the place to... Okay, so now I'm in really good shape. I've got one from 14 and a half. Is the, uh, it's, and again, it's recalculating the average based on the entries. So now I can put a stop under it, and we'll just see if it gets going here. I've got... Uh, Oh, let's see. So this whole trade's profitable. Now we're back at 17. I've got the stop on the rest of it at 16. If it doesn't really take off here, then we just basically scaled out with two points of profit. And that just filled. So that's good. But you can see, you know, 15's working, but it didn't work nearly as well that time as it did the last time. I didn't get anywhere near 20 on my push up. I only got 17 and a half. That concerns me. So I that's why I took profit and went back to the sidelines. That's just... Yeah, the, the level of aggression of the move up is is waning. And you can see, you know, pink, lots of pink down here on my 15 seconds. That means it's going the wrong direction for long. Um, so anyway, I really like those bar 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 deltas on these uh, Sierra chart 15 second footprints. Because you can literally just look at that and understand what's happening, you know, from a scalping point of view right now. It, it gives you, you know, you don't want to necessarily trade off this, but it really gives you an idea. Like right now, everything is, you know, was blue and now it's blue again. You know, that's the momentum. So we're at 17. So that's, that's how it's getting from 15 to 17. And that's why I really like watching fast footprints or fast ranges with LRCs or whatever, you know, gaming the fast um, action, gaming the price action. Oh, we got a nice little turnout for the closing session here. It's just going, so again, I mentioned this before. I've been long from the lows. I just was long off 15 a few times. Um, but what's really going on here is if we're going to get a short squeeze going into the close and on a trend down day like this, that wouldn't be a big shocker. Um, you know, we saw that a Friday ago. Remember, I did a live session. Um, so, you know, it, it should happen later and, you know, right before one o'clock my time. And right now it's almost noon. But, um, you know, the last two periods, so we want to see what happens right at noon and then again um, at 1230 and then right going into one o'clock my time. That if we're going to get a short squeeze, it'll be on one of those boundaries or right before the close, like five, 10 minutes before one. So, um, and, and those are so easy to trade. You just go with them. I mean, you can't get a bad entry when there's, when there's short squeeze momentum, you know, and, and what do we have? What are we down here? Hold on, let's look. So we're down 41 points. I mean, even if it just squeezes half of that, um, you know, you could catch a wicked 20 pointer. That's 80 ticks, you know? So um, I'm prepared for that to happen, but I'm not going to bet on it. You know, again, it's got to clear 21st or that's not even close to happening. And, you know, maybe test that initial balance low at 23, 22 and a half, 22, that area. 
And if it gets through there, then that's a possibility. But if it doesn't, then we're probably just going to move around and explore this, this range. We could also really slowly fill in this low volume node that Dave pointed out. And that would be painfully hard to trade. It could just go back and forth in little two, four, six tick and just gradually fill in the volume. And that's, that's probably what's going to happen, I'm thinking, at least from now till, uh, till we hit the next period, which is in about another minute and a half. Okay, so uh, I'll be right back. Um, you guys can all watch. And um, again, if you have any questions, I, the chat's open. You can chat, uh, you can post to everybody and to me. Um, I will answer questions. I've um, been having a lot of fun with this stuff today. I've been working on some new, um, uh, whenever I've been scaling for a while and I've been working on risk management with scaling is always, number one, uh, it's a skill on top of just trading that you have to really hone and then you have to really tune it into market conditions. If you scale at the wrong time in a market that's this volatile, you'll just get, you know, just creamed. And so it's, um, I'm playing around with, with different models for this as the volatility increases, because I think this is going to continue for a while. And um, anyway, so that's one of the things I've been working on just while it's quiet like this. And I really like a couple of the models I have. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go get, I think I'm going to go get a coffee. Let's, all right, you know what? I'm going to stay here and see the, uh, the top of the hour, because we, we could just take off either way right then, in which case I might want to join it. So let's wait till we actually see the next period a little bit of a lift going on right here okay are they going to push it going in let's watch right there remember i said it's got to clear 21st then it's in that low volume node but every time it's touched it it's traded back down to 15 so far so it just has not shown the desire to get through and this rotation is sloppy at both ends but right now the buyers are running the show so let's see if they can push it we're above uh, max delta on this current bar. On the session, we're, we're right in the middle of min and max delta. So it's a range as far as the session's concerned. But on the 30 minute, we, are, we, we do have buyers barely, but buyers in control. Anywhere above 15 has been a really good long, but it has not been able to get through 20. Let's see if it can do it right now. Ah, it looks like it might. Okay, remember the IB lows right above us, as is the VWAP, as is a, an area that's been traded it's been it's been in play for months this spot right here so really important let's see if they can push it up through here i might join this long in a minute let's see if 20 holds there's a um, i'm gonna try to join the micros here if we can hold this area because then we really could rock and roll but i don't think it's gonna hold it i don't know let's see i like a pullback to 15 again to get long here i like that one a lot let's see if we get that um, so yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll buy 1675. I'm, I'm in line there right now. Um, let's see if it can pull back to that and the energy holds because that stays in the range and that's, that's a really good spot. So basically if you look over here, that's, we, this, this is a little sloppy still at both ends, but that's the bottom of where it broke out from. So again, if it can kind of pull back in there, the, the buyers are still in control from my point of view, so I'll, I'll join this long with a few micros. Let's see if it can do that. I mean, we could see the sellers reassert themselves and go blasting down too. That you know, anything's possible here in this spot. But 20 was definitely the spot we wanted to get to, so that was a really good long to hear. I mean, can't argue with that one at all. It was pretty, but now it's going to battle here a bit, so let's just watch it. I might nibble at 17 and a half also. I've got an order at 16.75. That's the top of the high volume note again, but it looks like 18 or 17 and a half could also be a good spot. Again, that's the thesis that this is going to hold and continue to kind of squeeze into the close. FOMCs tomorrow though, you know, you could argue that we're going to go back down and revisit the lows if this doesn't hold as well. So I am not going to be really aggressive. That's why I'm in the micros also. Okay, there it goes. So 20 is holding for now. And that, so we're right on the spot right now. We're on the IB low right now. And this is a critical spot. We're hitting the other end of the high volume. You know, so basically we've crossed the low volume node, but we have not filled it in. So it remains very dangerous right around here. Um, this, this entire area, it's still below the overnight low, which is right there. 
Um, and this was a, a big delta right there that we sold off from. So somebody was a heavy seller right there. So again, this is just a dangerous spot. There's an air pocket below, but again, as long as 15 to 17 holds, uh, it does have a bit of a long, long lean right now. Anyway, I am not in the trade, but I've got some orders down there. I, I did play the one up, for, uh, the, the pop up here to 20. That was a no brainer to play. But now that we're up here, I'm, I'm not as interested. We're kind of filling in the low volume node, and that can get pretty volatile. Uh, no, there's 22.5 again. I wouldn't short this. There's no way I'd short it, but um, definitely might buy a pullback. It would take a lot of momentum change to convince me to reshort this at all today. This looks like it put in a decent low for the day down there at big fat hole number. And it's been pretty much going up ever since. You know, one more quick review here. Let's look at the whole 30 minute, you know, that that's that low. It just really did a good job. It took forever to do it, you know, it took two and a half hours. But once it finally made that low, it's it's a convincing low. And now, oh, now we've got some zero prints on the way up here. So this is why I just don't want to be playing right here. It's sweep in both directions. We just got some zero prints on that sweep up. But you know we're at twenty three seventy five now. So ooh, that was and this this cycle is now really clean at the top and not at the bottom. This rotation. So again, it's just vulnerable to be sitting long here. But I definitely don't like short, even though it could certainly pull back to the other end. That probably what I would do is I would look again. I've got orders down here seventeen and a half ish, down to sixteen seventy five. So that's a long ways away now. So I doubt I'll get filled down there. And now, now, now that's not as clean. Looks like we got more to go. Yeah, this could be a really fun closing long. I'm gonna um, cancel my orders and go get some coffee now that we're in the last two periods. I'm going to let this play out for a little while, but it, it's, you know, if you got the right entry down there, it's still a good long. You could be hanging on here, but I'd, I'd just be careful. The squeeze up definitely is the trade though. And as long as you can protect your, yourself from this, the risk, and now we're at 25. So now we're right on the bottom of the big high volume node above us. We're still in that low volume node between right on the VWAP. So yeah, as long as the momentum continues, this is a great long trade. Looks like it's got more to go on this one. Yeah, look at that. Uh, might even join this if it can hold again. Let's see. I got to go get some coffee though, so I don't want to get too aggressive. Yeah, this, you could argue again, it's still trying to decide. It, it took that out convincingly, but again, unless the momentum keeps up, and if you look down here on my 15s, yeah, it's kind of sort of trying. Now it's going the other way. So I don't know. I'm not going to get aggressive here. It's not worth it. All right. I am going to go grab some coffee. I'll be back. Let's see. Pardon this remedial question. No such thing, Bob. If rollover is Thursday, uh, rollover isn't Thursday. Rollover was last Thursday. This Friday is expiration witching. I'm sorry. Start over. This Friday, <laughs> this right here. Let's bring up the calendar. This Friday is expiration. Rollover was last week. Yeah. So, um, so let's see. Yeah, we rolled last week. So I'm, I'm confused by your question. Um, we've been on the March since last Thursday. It's quad witching. Yeah. That's what's this Friday. Are you, you, you're, you're, you're a week back. That was last week, Bob. This is the, what's, I, I, you confuse me for a second because it's, it, we're going into the third Friday. And so that's, that's the quad witch. The rollover was last week. So, yeah, I don't know why why you're saying if rollover is Thursday, it isn't. <laughs> um, you know, again, unless I'm really backwards on my days here, I'll double check and look at my calendar. But I'm pretty certain we rolled over last week. Yes, we did. So, yeah, <laughs> just have another cup of coffee too, Bob. I think you need it, but it's no no worries. All right, yeah, rollover was last Thursday. We are in quad witching week. For a minute there, you thought I, I, I you had me thinking I was taking drugs, but or more than I usually do anyway. All right, I'm going to get some coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs>
Four, I see. Yes, we did roll last week. Thank you for confirming that. Like I said, I for a minute that I thought I was going crazy. So, that, but that's okay. You can always ask a question. Like it's easy to get confused, Bob. That this is a confusing business, uh, just because there's lots of little parameters like that. So anyway, here we are again, litigating twenty five, and it ah boy, it could go either way here. I mean, it's definitely long because it got up here really aggressively. But having said that. This low volume air pocket remains really dangerous right below us. So, you know, and there we go. So, you know, if, unless you're willing to take two, three, four, five point sweeps, you know, you have to just be really particular. You know, again, this was a really good spot to get long. The long we just did is a really good spot. But now this one again is not yet. It's got to it's got to make this more convincing before I would really get excited about getting long again here. So anyway, I'm just going to watch. We're right on the view app. And again, I don't use the view app to trade, but it just means, you know, we're kind of on value if you look at the whole session. So, you know, and big high volume note above us. Um, here's what the profiles look like. It's kind of sloppy. Um, you can see the, all the volume was below us, but we're right on a big giant overnight high volume node. And um, oh, there we're popped up now. So, you know, but it's got a lot of work to do to get out of this pit. So uh, if I'm going to play closing momentum, I want to see a lot of it all at once that I can really join without risk. And see, here's a little bit more. But again, it wrapped up quick. So, yeah, you know, again, if you can get good entries to play long, that's definitely the right idea. I would not be playing short under pretty much any circumstances um, at the moment. And um, let's see if we can catch a momentum trade. You know, and the, there could be a wicked fun trade again right at the close. Remember, oh, here, let me bring up the uh, there was a uh, chart from last. Let's see, hold on. Let me go to the pit. And I did a closing last week and I put a, let's see, where did that go? Uh, ad hoc closing session. Yeah, this is what happened <laughs> last week. Um, there was one of these where it was just sitting around 87, and then all of a sudden we're at 02 instantly. So, yeah, we could get something like that, is what I'm saying. We could get a very similar event. Now we're at, excuse me, at 30 already. So, we may have just got part of it. Again, if you're long and getting good entries, that's a good trade here. I would not play short, but I'm not going to. Oh, I'm not going to chase longs. I want it to be, you know, really good spots. So that spot held again, it's just risky. And this is still a big air pocket. So be really nimble. There's a big high volume node from overnight right here. You can see it um, again, respect that. And, um, you know, we're trade. We're still in a range, you know, look at the, this is Oh wait, the, guess what? We're upside down, aren't we? That's interesting. We are upside down. So, hmm. This one was a nice tight little spot. We blew out of there, but now it's it's messy. So anyway. All right. Well, let's go get that coffee. I think it's ready. And um, let's see. Again, I'm not yeah, there's some good trades here, but it, it's really dependent that you get the right entries. If you don't, a lot of these spots are are not. It's not at all clear what's happening. So to be really aggressive just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, particularly on a day like this where there's already been some really good trades to take advantage of. But having said all of that, um, there could be some real fun momentum here a little later, maybe around the bottom of the hour and maybe 15 minutes into the close when you know people are going to start taking profits on shorts from the open. The whole thing could get very interesting. So... Let me, uh, I'm just getting some foam on my coffee. Poor man's latte machine. I have a shaker cup full of milk. Um, okay. Uh, oh, it's really nice up here. The fireplace is on. The hell with trading. I want to come up here. Mm. It's pouring rain and it's really windy here in Cambria. So we've had a big storm. So I've got one of my fireplaces on upstairs. It's really nice. All right. And of course, we're back at 26. So, well, 30 got sold pretty hard, didn't it? <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, again, this is why you don't hang on to longs on days like this, because they pull back by five or six points and you just don't want to give that back. So awesome, awesome, Heidi. Yeah, that that that's what you needed to do. I I, I just kept saying, this is going to hold, this is going to hold. And I was scalping it. And then, you know, once it started to go, unfortunately, I was in micros. I'd been scalping minis, but I just let it ride and caught a real nice move. It was, it was pretty. But you had to be so patient down there at the, at the lows because it, it, a couple of times it looked like it wasn't going to hold. You know, it teased breaking down. So and that's what happened. That's why it held. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a very pretty bottom here. She had a pretty bottom. Here, I'll compress this up so you can see it again down there. And, you know, but at first it held and then it took it out and then it held again and then it took it out a little more. You know, I mean, it was teasing and teasing. And then finally we got some traction. But boy, uh, that one scared a lot of people, I'm sure. Particularly those over leveraged, over too much size in the trade which that one definitely could have sucked people into. Anyway. Yeah, if you're doing that in a combine, exactly. Yeah, you've got to really be careful with your drawdowns, particularly with Lilo and Apex. Their drawdown rules are strict. Yeah, so definitely be mindful of that. <sighs> Sipping coffee. Trying to decide what to do when I grow up. What do I want to be when I grow up? Uh, bop, 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 bop. What is going on there? Let's spread that out just a bit. Boy, it's really back and forth right here in this area. Look at my fast footprints. They're just kind of oscillating. Pink blue, pink, blue, pink, blue. It's like they can't decide if it's a boy or a girl. And, um, but we're not going either way. <laughs> Somebody asked me if that's what that meant. Is that boys and girls? No. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. When we blew past all the aggressive sellers on time. Yeah, exactly. That, and that, yeah, that worked really well. I agree. Um, but again, you had to be so patient on that trade. It really... It really made you sit there and just stare at it for hours. It was painful. Ah, nice warm coffee. I'll be right back, guys. So I don't know how much talking I'm going to do here, but basically I was saying that was a really hard long to stay with because it just did not have any conviction. And it was up here where there was a lot of volume consolidating. That was what I was saying when the mic was bad. That's, that was bad. So this is the pullback on the session, and it looks pretty clean, too, for the moment. So anyway, that's what's going on. But this headset is a big issue for this to not. I got to figure out how to make this longer. Let's see. How can we do that? Uh, do I have a USB extension cord somewhere? I probably do. I hate plugged-in devices. They're so last year. Hopefully it was just my headset was running low on battery because I had used it all morning and I hadn't really thought about that. So we'll let it recharge and we'll keep this on its cord. But I know I've got an extension cord for this somewhere. Where is it? Uh, things you can never find when you need them. USB extension cords. I have a box of cables, of course, but those are at the bottom of it, so I'm not going to dig it out right now. All right. So anyway, we're saying this is the same. It's it's still working this big, you know, right at the IB bottom up to this high volume node. It filled in the low volume node pretty well that we had talked about down here. David had brought that up earlier, but we did not fill in the volume. We just passed through it. And it worked pretty hard to get through it. So the top here is, is not quite finished again. So we might have some more upside on this rotation. But I, there's no way I'm, I'm, I'm not shorting this and I'm not being really aggressive with longs. I'll take longs on good entries like 15 was a good one, but this is not. So 
but the momentum is picking up again. What I really want to do is I want to get a momentum trade between like the bottom of the hour and the close. If we, you know, if we really get high momentum, it, it, those are really good, easy trades. You just join it and you can just keep joining it and picking off three, four ticks at a time. You can't get a bad entry when there's really good at closing high momentum. Um, and you can also just let it rip with a couple of micros if you want. That's another way to do it. So again, this is not a good spot. The session VWAP now is way below us. And again, I've been saying this volume, big volume at the bottom, really thin in here from 16 to 22. And then now we're filling it up here. So yeah, I wouldn't trade it short. It's a nice long if you get good entries. That's really the bottom line. Remains the bottom line. That's what I was saying, which you may or may not have been able to hear me on the earlier attempt at the session. I think it still wants to go up, but again, I'm not chasing it. Oh, where are we in the... We are now... Do, 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 yeah, we're still down 30 points and we're up 30 points off the low. So we're kind of in the middle of the, the drop, basically. Also known as the ambush zone, dangerous spot to be in, can, can go either way really aggressively. Whoops, that's NQ. I don't want to look at NQ right now. I want to look at ES. ES, there it is. So nice little sell off right at 32 there. Cleaned up the top of the rotation. Now they're selling on the pullback. So, well, now the top of the rotation is still sloppy. It, it's just below that, though. So, yeah, what it just, did we just hit the bottom of the hour? Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So this is the first, first of the last period. So this is an interesting spot time-wise. Again, yeah, we're enough off the low that I suspect anybody that was really short has already taken profits or covered. So I don't know. Again, if the momentum picks up a lot, I'll join it. But I'm not going to get super aggressive here. I like long from, from areas that are holding, you know which this kind of is, but yeah, maybe it's going to blow north here again and puke some more, maybe. And there's a price projector on the, trying to form on that bar, but not quite. Yeah, now it cleaned up the top, so. Oh, and now it's got some left there. So yeah, this could go higher, but it's it's battling itself, you know. Another low volume node, but if you add them together, this is, again, this is the session closest to us. This is the overnight. So it's kind of filling in. You know, if you stick that in there, this is all filling in um, for 24 hours of volume, which makes sense. And that's why up here it looks like this looks more filled in because it's basically both of those together. I like to look at it that way just to get an eye. Sometimes it does that. It'll just come and fill overnight areas without any real directionality but you know obviously the direction's still up here if you're if you're in a good entry this is a long trade and again for the 50th time i would not be short here i wouldn't be short at all anywhere since we we held the low the only thing that makes this interesting to continue or one of the things there's lots of them but the main one of interest at the very moment is you know fmc is tomorrow that could do all kinds of things so you know the open should be active and then it's going to be quiet you know what if they announce a rate increase they could you never know i mean everyone thinks it's coming how will the market respond you know what if it's bigger than they expect what if they push the can down the road again you know there's a million things that could affect people's sentiments so well here we are at 35 again the you know off 20 there's been a really sweet long but i wouldn't get married to it i would i would protect profits in that long if you're still in it So anyway. Oh, yawn, yawn, yawn. Mm. Yeah. 
nothing really I want to join here at all, at least not yet. That could be the extent of all the energy we get going into the close, but we still have, what, 25 minutes. So we'll see what happens. Again, you know, I mentioned this in the previously that the, the last week there was one of these that the last 10 minutes was just rock and roll so that's not uncommon on a day like this where we've had a pretty decent trending move the problem with it is we've kind of already eaten up a lot of it um here's just yeah, this view gives you an idea this is just a five minute view the blue is the first hour high and low and you know we're We've come off the lows substantially. We're in the middle of where it broke down, you know, so to continue going back up and close, you know, at the IB high or even, you know, um, at break even, it would just be really surprising, but it's certainly possible. You know, NQ is continuing to go up too, so that could happen. This is NQ. It looks a little bit stronger, um, but they both look decent, obviously. Uh, anyway, yeah, not far from a two-sided day. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. That could certainly happen, but the range is awful big, Robert. But yeah, um, NQ is really close to that. Um, it's it's ES is farther away here. These are the session footprints up at the top. So I'm just going to crunch them together so you can see. So, you know, that's the top of NQ. It's pretty close. ES has some work to do, but it's doable, you know. Um, price rejector at the low. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. So, let's see. The price point we'd be looking for to break it would be right at 52. So that would put us like right. Uh, I've got to get close enough to be able to read this. 40 did put us like right in here. So right up there. So, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, well, it's skew the curve. There's so much volatility recently that, you know, we could definitely skew, skew the statistics a bit. There's no question because we've just had really volatile action. And that it's really, you know, from price action point of view, again, it's really tradable. But from a statistics point of view, you know, we could be in kind of black swanning and pushing, you know, two from two standard deviations to three. You know, that, that wouldn't be uncommon in these conditions. And uh, if that is the case, you know, then certainly um, the statistics could get a little warped temporarily. So anyway, ouch. Let's put this guy back so we can see where that is. So that's right there. And here's, um, you know, the range, the bottom of the range, that's the IB low, that's the IB high. And um, so 52. We are currently 37. Boy, that's a long way from here, but it is not out of the question. With a lot of momentum at the close, possible. We're 24 minutes away. I doubt it. I would probably bet against that, but you know, I wouldn't do it with a lot of money. I'd borrow money from you and then bet against it with your money. Um, yeah, it was a really big break of the IB low. That, that exactly. So yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, it didn't just break it, it crushed it. And even getting back to it, it battled. So, you know, how much of this could just be some short squeezing off of the retest of the low? And that's not out of the question. That's why I'm not an aggressive long here. But unless that shows itself that that's actually what's happening, there's no way I'm going to get short. If it does show that that's happening, you know, that could happen tonight. There could be a really good short setup tonight. Um, so, you know, is this just a bounce that's you know, NQ says no. NQ is about to go the other, you know, it's almost at the other end of the range at the IB high. So NQ says no, that's not what's happening. But again, it's right where it broke down. And uh, when it's volatile, I always give, you know, a lot more room for doubt. And see, here's what YM, you know, YM looks like ES. It's still could just be nothing more than a correction off the IB low. But look how much better it held the IB low than ES did. So that's uh, that's significant as well. And RTY is kind of looks like a lot like ES as it usually does on days like this. It's it's pretty much the same pattern. I'll grab it and show you in a second. So yeah, here's RTY. You can see it's almost a mirror image. On days like this, RTY is like a baby 
Yeah, see, I mean, the patterns are almost always the same. The trading won't always be the same, but the pattern for the session will be pretty close. That's something I noticed over and over again. And, and, and RTY is just easier to trade than ES is because very, very few algorithms play over there. So I've said this a lot. You know, it's a better place to play on trend days if you're trading the trend. And just, you know, kind of assume it's going to stay pretty, pretty much in the same um, physical pattern. That's what I mean. Yeah, that grind up last Friday, Robert. Yeah, we talked about that. I, I brought back up the uh, in the pit. I had posted the closing announcements, and um, one of them was that from last week. So, uh, at hot closing session, yeah, you know th this kind of behavior. You know, look where that occurred. You know, it occurred right in like the last few minutes of the session, and um, so we could certainly get one of those. Uh, those happen a lot. And that's one of the reasons uh, I'm doing closing sessions, because yeah, if we get that momentum, you want to join it, but you just want to make really sure that's what we're getting. Like now, look, you know, price rejector, and all of a sudden we're back at 32. You know, you just you can't sit one direction or the other, or you know, you can end up really off sides really fast. So anyway, well, this is quiet. I'm just gonna see if I since I'm using this this headset, I'm gonna see if I can dig out my. USB extension. Otherwise, I'm going to break something sooner or later here with this cord. Probably break my neck is what I'll break. So um, let's see. Where is a USB extension? It's in that box. And that box is under that box. Hmm. Well, I'm not so sure how good the headset's going to work on an extension either. So. All right, I'll play with that idea later. This headset should be really, really clear. This is my expensive Sennheiser one that unfortunately has a cord, so but it's a really good one. Uh, anyway. So we're back at 31 at the bottom of this rotation with a price rejector one more time. And there is, or on the pullback, there's a price rejector at the top of this rotation. So anything could happen here. But remember, there's a massive air pocket right underneath us, <laughs> right there. You know, we could be in that in a heartbeat if the sellers reassert themselves. So I'm just, I'm, I have no interest in staking out a position here until I see something happening. Uh, one more time, I'll show you guys the internals. They're they're crappy. It's a it's a trend down day. So you know the bottom can fall at any time. You know this is all indicative of a lot of selling. So and the heat map's been interesting all day. This is this is it here. And um, Adobe's way down. What is that? Six and a half percent. Microsoft's down three percent. You know this is not a market that's just rallying by any stretch of the imagination. See what's going on. Microsoft's what's holding the Dow down and CRM. Uh, it's also holding down the NASDAQ along with Adobe. Interesting. Uh, the Russell's just a mess both ways. Financials are up. Healthcare's are mixed. You know, there's nothing to see there. And then, of course, the spoos. It's all about Adobe, Microsoft. This block of tech is what's holding it down. So, yeah, I don't think we're going to get a massive rally into the close here. Maybe a momentum trade, but I don't think any big buyers are going to step up. And it's certainly possible the selling could resume. So let's just let's just enjoy the show and see if we get a good setup. We get an ace king. Uh, you can see this is pretty aggressive selling here. Remember, these are 15 seconds. So basically, you know, that's a minute and a quarter, and it's really aggressive down at the moment here. So. That's why I really like these bar by bars because when the aggression changes, you know, it's like it's no longer a girl, it's a boy. <laughs> and so, you know, you can tell right where it's happening. It just happened right there. Now, whether that will that hold, we'll see. Or will they reassert themselves down? They will reassert themselves down. So there we go. And you can see all four at once really clearly without having to read the numbers. This is for, for those of us at this end of the life spectrum, this is much easier to follow. It's very visual. So you get a really good idea of the structure of the session and the 30-minute footprint, but you can see the momentum really clearly as it kind of flows out of, of any of the four of them. And right now, that momentum continues to be to the downside. RTY is leading us down. 
You can see that lower right hand corner. Now, now there's some buyers. Let's see if that holds it up at 27 and a half. That's a quarter. No, so far it's pushing down. Next quarter in play is 25. Remember what I just said like 30 seconds ago that there's an air pocket here? Well, guess what? We're in it. <laughs> so um, now we're at 25. You know, that this is the game. So those longs that married 30, whatever it is up here, 38 or wherever we got, you know, they're, they're crying right now. Uh, but this is a really good example. The reason I wanted to do these closing sessions, if we can't get a moment, if we get a momentum trade, they're really fun. But, but if we don't, it's just a really good way to learn, you know, just how the, the kind of the pieces of uh, interact, how the indexes interact around the session highs and lows and the deltas. Everything you need to know is pretty much on this one. This is my 32 4K panel that's just to the left of my trading screen. So this is kind of a lot of context altogether, and it's really useful for that. Not only, you know, slow context, but what's happening right now. I see now it's getting bought across the board right here. So 27, 25 to 27 held. So is this going to be a spot potentially to go back up? Maybe, you know, it's right on a high volume node. You know, that filled in that low volume from overnight. We're right on negative delta. So, you know, you definitely want to see it hold here or the sellers could assert themselves. But these are the correct way around now on both the last two rotations as well as the pullback. There's buyers on the pullback. So there's a potential price rejector on the pullback. It's, it's trying to form. Nope. There's 25 again. There goes 25. So definitely the inflection point is 25 to 27 and a half here, which is the quarters, of course. What a shocker. Oh, okay. If you have any questions, feel free to post them. I will handle them. We're going to end this right at the end of the, the uh, session. I'm going to end quickly because I've been at this most of the day. If you were around in the morning, I did the morning sessions too today. So it's been a productive day, but I'm, I'm getting tired. Got a lot of good stuff done on my point of view here for this set of conditions. I'm pleased with what we've got here now. This guy, that, perfect. Wow, 25 is really in play here. Compression on this MQ, it is no compression. Okay, there. Now we're at 27 again. <laughs> and back and forth we go. I'm not going to commit to either direction there. That's just the range. That's all it is. It's working the range. See if you watch the. We're right on the delta, the, the negative delta, the minus the. So you know, definitely need a hole right here. But on the pullback, we're right at you know positive, and we came up pretty strongly. So again, key spot right here again at twenty seven, twenty eight. You know, if that can hold, if it doesn't. You know, I be low right here again. You know, remember how hard we worked to get to that. If that goes going the other direction, it could it could fall pretty fast. So, you know, we could end up having Robert, we could have, end up having a double break day uh, and not, I, not in the sense of both sides, in the sense of a double break of the low. And um, that's an interesting idea here. Um, that those events, when you get that, the statistics say, if we get it real soon, well, no, it's actually too late now. If we got a double break of the low here, uh, that would put the low of the session in jeopardy if it was about an hour earlier but we don't really have enough time now unless the bottom just falls out. But that's something a friend of mine used to track. Yeah, double breaks. So not breaking one side or the other or both, but if it breaks twice, you know, then what's likely to happen? And I know you're really into statistics. Those are, those are really interesting statistics. 
Um, when you break the IB at one end, go back into the range and then go get it again. Um, particularly if you're doing that early in the session. Yeah, long way to go and just before FOMC, exactly. So again, I'm gonna, I'm, I'd be stunned if we didn't close somewhere right around where we are now. We're, we're doing a real good job of establishing value here. In the in the very traditional sense of value, you know, the volume is 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 you know right on a chunk of volume, we're right on the bottom of the range, but we've tested it nicely. You know that this is one of those days that I'd be really surprised if it didn't close somewhere right around here. So here, you can kind of see that's that's a good kind of summary of the session. In fact, you know what? Let me real quickly. So these are sixty minute rotations. So there's the whole session. You get a really clear picture. Um, you know, we we. We're holding the low, you know, and a lot of volume up here. We had a lot of volume at the lows. This is the air pocket that's really dangerous right below us. So if the low goes, if, if the IB low goes, we could certainly, you know, retest this high volume node all the way down there. And, you know, that's that 15 area that I was buying before. So this is a very interesting spot to watch. And again, I'm on 60 minutes right now, just to kind of zoom in on that and see the whole session all together. There's 30 minutes. Um, and again, it just took it out right there. So now this gets really interesting to see if the spot can hold. We just took out the IB low again. Um, so it's in that sense, it's a double low break. Uh, let's see if we get this readable right there. Okay. And now just like that, we're at 24 again. <laughs> this is just, you know... I real feel I really feel sorry for those guys that that spent five thousand dollars on trend following software, because <laughs> basically for the last nine months it's been worthless. <laughs> and I know a couple of people in that boat. That, we had a couple of people in a boot camp that had spent ten thousand on real trend following software. Okay, if you say so, and you know, and had just. I'd realized right away that when it works, you could tell it would work anyway. And when it's not working, it's useless. So it's really uh, a waste of money. But, you know, I guess you have to go through that a few times to learn that lesson. So here we are, 23 again. Now we're 25 again. Man, it's just moving around, isn't it? I've been watching a bunch of British BBC stuff in my leisure. And uh, I keep saying, in it. You know, like like the some of the Brits say, you know, contraction of isn't it in it? You know, reminds me of uh, Peter at uh, Jigsaw because he says that all the time. Yes, life lessons can be expensive. That is a true statement, Robert. But you know what? Another true statement is at the end of life, you can't spend it anyway. So, you know. It's funny. I remember I, I grew up in this area where there was a lot of trust fund babies and whatnot. And, and it was always about the generational wealth. And fortunately, I wasn't one of them. And I always kind of had the idea that, you know, you can't take it with you. So, And I don't have kids. And my sister is wealthy. And so my nephews are well taken care of. And um, so, you know, not, you know, you only live once, buy every dip with everything you've got, you know, but it just, it, it's, it's uh, worth enjoying your success too. Smell the roses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Last check will be the undertaker and it will bounce. Exactly. Go out the way you came in. I love the, uh, what's his name quote on that. Let me find it real quick. Um, On here, let's see. Yeah, I love this quote right here. Yeah, I'm trying to copy it so I can. There we go. Okay. Yeah. It all boils down to contentment. That's exactly what it does and expectations. You know, some people are never content with anything, no matter how much money, power, or whatever. And, and I, I find that sad. I agree with you, Pete. I love this quote. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, what a ride, Hunter S. Thompson. 
you do have to be happy with yourself first. That's critical, Robert. Yeah. If, if you don't like yourself, then none of this stuff psychologically works. You have to, and you have to know yourself too, you know, what matters to you and why, you know, is it just because it was on TV that it matters or does it really matter? You know, and as you get older, you get a little better at that, you know, with more experience, particularly if you've had a, a rough life, you learn better when you have a rough life. I'm a perfect example of that. Um, anyway, well, let's see. We've got a few more minutes. We'll go ahead and wait till the close here. It's starting to get a little down energy again, but it's pretty much two ways. You know, I don't think the bottom's going to fall out, but really looking forward to uh, tomorrow with FOMC and and then expiration on Friday. So this should be fun. But there's no trades here that I'm interested in right now. Again, absent momentum, there's nothing I really want to do at this time of day. And if we were to get some really crazy good momentum, I would absolutely join it. But absent that situation, there's nothing of interest to me here. Uh, much better stuff. And a day like this, there's just so many good opportunities like that low. You know, why try to trade here? You know, when you could have just bought the low if you were patient and, you know, and had just a killer day, you know, you'd have 20, 30 points, not text points, you know, with whatever you bought it with. And it was such a, a well-defined low. It took forever to form. No question about that. But once it did, it was perfect. So anyway. Learning from the experience of others is a way to, yeah, that's true. That is true. That's a toddler way to get started, but that's okay. You know, baby steps. I agree with that. Boy, now we're back at 20. So we took out the IB low pretty aggressively. And 20, remember I said earlier when I was robotic, is a massive line in the sand. If it gets below 20 again, that's been a level that's just been in play forever. Um, here, I'll show you why. Look at the TPO view. I mean, it's just smack dab in the middle of this giant consolidation that we broke down from and we also traded through last time. So we're right on that big consolidation again. That's why I keep saying 20 is so interesting because it's just smack dab in the middle of that. And that goes back, you know, not just the last couple of weeks, that goes back six months, nine months. That area has been for whatever reason, you know. All right. So we have uh, five more minutes, four more minutes. We will wrap up pretty much at the top of the hour, unless it's just crazy moving then, in which case we'll, we'll stick around and play for a few minutes. But right now, I don't think we're going to get a lot more momentum now. I think everybody's just kind of like, all right, that was a cool day. Let's go get a beer. <laughs> uh, I would really love a good craft beer right now, but it's just while the sun came out. Maybe that might be a project. Go grab a beer. I haven't had a beer in ages. My old body doesn't like to metabolize them, but I enjoy a craft beer. That's for sure. It's one of my favorite things. When I was a little bit younger, I used to love to, uh, when I was coding um, or working on business plans that or reading business plans when I was a VC actively, still do that sometimes, but I used to love to go to like just dive bars around the town I was in and just like grab a corner and booth and, and a nurse a beer and just watch all the interesting people. There's a bar down in Santa Barbara that gets, it's actually south in Summerland. It gets all the, the really hardcore beach people from below Santa Barbara and Carpinteria and, um, and I used to love to sit in there and just watch the, the locals and the, the bartenders are local. And it just got you hear some of the most hysterical conversations. Uh, is there old people's beer? Yeah. The problem is, you know, just as you get older, your body gets less and less good at, at everything. And so metabolizing alcohol is one of them. And I've heard this from a lot of my friends, you know, many of them drink and, you know, uh, first person I ever heard it from was Chrissy Hind, the, the lead singer of The Pretenders. I heard her say it once that she's, she had stopped drinking beer and wine because she just didn't sleep well if she did drink it. And I was like, you know, that's funny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not drink one night and see. And sure enough, I felt the same way. And I was like, and she's older than me, 10 years-ish. Um, but boy, I tell you what, you know, for a woman that's almost 70, Chrissy Hind looks remarkable she's she still rocks leather pants i mean bless her heart anyway if you don't know who i'm talking about 
here i'll give you get a quick snap here we'll get a couple more minutes into the close so let's see Uh, is Chrissy Hine right there? A little bit younger days. There she is. Uh, that's a video. We don't want to watch a video. I thought that was a, an image. Hang on. Yeah, there she is. How old is she now? Let's see. 68 as of this article in 2020. So she's actually, yeah, just about 70. So. Badass lady. I like badass ladies. Lots of respect for her. Like I've said in another live session, another example of that is uh, Carrie Fisher, a friend of my sister's, uh, fellow writer, another hardcore badass lady that I had a lot of respect for, who had a really hard life between her mom and drugs and all that. Anyway, okay, cool. So let's see some good comments. Um, yeah, yeah, Robert. I, I now and then I'll have one and I'll drink a lot of water with it. But I just love, I love citrus craft beers, you know, like uh, Deschutes Fresh Squeeze. That's my favorite. Anyway, uh, the oldies are killing the beer hardcore. Yeah, I hear you, Pete. I hear you. All right, folks. So let's see, where are we? We're one minute. So this is the close right here, at least of RTH. And then we're going to go into settlement. So let's watch the RTH close as it unfolds. 10 seconds, I believe. Let's see. Ah, the buyers are coming in. So that's short covering you're seeing right now. There's the bell, and yeah, we're done right here. It's closing right on that high volume node. So tomorrow morning in the overnight could be really interesting. You know, the fact that 4,600 held. Um, so I'm, I'm going to crash for three, four, five hours, and then I'm, I might trade tonight. So again, keep an eye on the alerts. I'll post it if I do. If not, uh, tomorrow morning, we've got JVC doing the live sessions, and uh, then we've got FOMC, and so it should be a crazy day. So we'll see you guys. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed it. So, uh, you know, these are always educational to do for me too, just because I have to actually, you know, stay really focused on what I'm actually saying. So, um, yeah, I never sleep more than that, Pete. I'm a, a polyphasic sleeper. Even four or five hours would be a lot for me. Um, but, you know, the, the, the good trading is a ways off. It's, you know, it's 12 hours away. So I, I may do two cycles between now and then. I'm curious how this is going to reopen. And, that, you know, that's two hours from now. So I might just take a, a power nap for an hour and a half and then watch the reopen. Um, but it, as it's going into settlement here, it's, it's you know, it's, it's drifting back down to the initial bounce low, price rejector up there. So, you know, the, the, there's no reason to believe that this can't go either way. Nice bounce off the lows, but. You know, it, it's not convincing. We're not going done going down again. We we remain right on the edge of that cliff that I keep talking about. And, you know, it really has to hold or things could get really interesting to the downside. All right. So the stabs during overnight must be more predictable. Oh, absolutely. They are, Pete. That's why I love trading the overnights. Um, is that I can scalp size. I, we did one uh, Monday morning really early. And we did like a three hour one. I don't recall if you were at it, but that's why you can, I can predictably do two, three lots scalping because you know, it, it just doesn't get crazy big moves except around events like a news event hitting the wire or the opening of Frankfurt or the opening of London, you know, and those are predictable, you know, they're coming. So, so yeah, the action is much more predictable, particularly for scalping, I'm picking off, you know, two and three tickers at night is, is a lot easier just because there's not a lot of volume and there's very few algorithms you know, in play. And so, you know, I, I'm doing more and more of that as I scale up. I'd much rather trade 10 at night than trade five at the open. <laughs> so um, hopefully that makes some sense. All right. Um, so we will call it a session. Burning desires once, twice. Any final questions, comments? If not, we're going to call it a day. And I'll post if I do end up doing anything tonight. Um, Got to go get my car tomorrow, I think. I'm not sure if it's going to be done. So that's tomorrow afternoon. So again, I, I don't know. The overnight's a possibility. Uh, might also be tomorrow night and Thursday morning after we get the FOMC. That's a possibility too. So somewhere in here, I'll do another overnight session. So watch for an alert on that. Uh, thanks, Pete. All right, we're out of here, guys. Stay nimble. Stay frosty. <laughs>